Okay, greetings, brothers and sisters. Um, I want to get into a couple of things. I want to get to Trump here in a bit. I have a few things to clear up about Shoteo Dotani. I'm not pronouncing his name right. And Don Lemons breaks his silence on list of diva demands to join Elon Musk S. People negotiate all the time. Um, I want to get into some stuff uh, religious related in terms of the second coming of Jesus. I forgot what I wanted to say, but hopefully it'll come back to me. If it doesn't, then I won't talk about it. But anyways, here it says, um, Don Lemons, he was interviewed on some podcast because now all of a sudden people want to talk to him because he's made it a big deal to be talked to. And he said, um, the guy said, the New York Post has reported some stuff that you made a bunch of requests from X that you asked for a cyber truck, an $8 million salary, and $5 million in stock options to a company that he was criticizing, right? <laughs> So he must have some faith in the company if he wants a car from his, from Tesla and he wants stock options from X. And he said, and other demands. And Lemon replied, oh, come on, that is nonsense. People negotiate all the time, but that's, come on, it's obviously a deflection. And so, you mean, that's what you asked for. And that was a negotiating tactic, and you were willing to back down on it, but it's a deflection. You've just admitted to it. This is the part where he admits it to it. People negotiate all the time. <laughs> um, and so Don Lemons, who is just, I mean, I, didn't, I think he's gotten stupider since he's left CNN. But he did this atrocious interview, and it was hilariously bad. And Elon Musk must have realized that this guy can't carry an audience. He's not going to bring an audience. See, you have to have something more when you bring an audience to social media because people have to find you and seek you out in a way that they don't have to do when they just turn CNN on. It's on in every airport, right? I mean, Don Lemons has got guaranteed views, guaranteed an audience just being on CNN. I mean, Chris Cuomo had a huge um, uh, decline in audience when he left CNN. And so Don Lemon, who pretty much wore out his welcome with um, liberals and woke consciousness people and even CNN fans this isn't going to be able to bring in an audience he has this one you know thing that he's done with Elon Musk it's going to get whatever amount of views it gets and then after that it's going to be a slow trip to yeah I remember when that guy used to be on TV land <laughs> um, so that's hilarious and so I reported on this on my other channel today a video that's just up today's um thursday march 21st i'm not going to get this out till tomorrow this video won't be completed till tomorrow but um i reported it like the official story was accurate and so shaheo otani's um interpreter rang up four million dollars in gambling debts and then um they did a press conference where he explained that his best friend, his interpreter is his best friend. That his interpreter um, gave a press conference and said that he went to his best friend and said, I need you to pay off my debts. And Otani, who doesn't have that big a grasp of English, uh, got up and said, you know, he realized this guy was lying, that that was the official story. And he got up and said he didn't even know about any of this, and that the guy took the money against his will. And so the problem with this story is, and I guess this guy might be a lawyer as well, I'm not sure, but the story has already changed. And there were four wire transfers of a million dollars with Otani's signature on those transfers, right? And so um, the issue here is this type of gambling, there are restrictions. And you have to put money up front. Like you can't gamble money that you don't have right it isn't like the old days where they come and and break your legs and things like this right they have to get this money legally so i don't know what kind of bookie would allow an interpreter to ring up four million dollars worth of bets right i mean he definitely made the bets this guy but it sounds like he was making the bets on behalf of this guy Shateo otani because why else would a you know a legal gambling uh you know, business allow someone who doesn't have that kind of money bring up four million dollars, and why would 
he pay it off. And so the second thing is why is Ota- why would Otani allow this guy access to wiring and embezzling money from him, right? Um, so it sounds like BS. Otani just signed a, a $750 million contract with the Dodgers. He's the highest paid athlete in America of all time. It's almost a billion dollars, right? He's three quarters of a billion dollars in salary that he has. And, you know, he can hit and pitch. I don't watch baseball, but he's kind of kind of a phenom. But the story just doesn't add up based on, I mean, the you know, the amount of money that was <laughs> that we're talking about here. OK, so let's start here. Donald Trump says that any Jewish American who votes for Democrats hates their religion and hates Israel. OK, the tr- Israel, <laughs> is that how you pronounce it, Mika? 2024 Republican nominee made those comments yesterday during a podcast interview. Take a listen. Why do the Democrats hate Bibi Netanyahu? I actually think they hate Israel. Yes. I don't think they hate him. I think they hate Israel. When you see those Palestinian uh, marches, even I am amazed at how many people are in those marches. And guys like Schumer see that. And to him, it's votes. I think it's votes more than anything else, because he was always pro-Israel. He's very anti-Israel. Now, any Jewish person that votes for Democrats uh, hates their religion. They hate everything about Israel, and they should be ashamed of themselves. You know, um, Donald Trump is so much of a shill for Israel, and now this is kind of important. Again, you know, I'm not voting, and I whatever happens, happens. <laughs> because, you know, there's no way to stop the collapse of our civilization. I've talked about this before in so many videos. But if Donald Trump gets elected, he's going to green light anything Israel wants to do. Um, in all of those, not just those countries. You know, this is what's at stake here. So this is the promised land, right? So Zionists believe that God promised them this land. You know, God doesn't promise anything. Right? I mean, there's no promises. I mean, God promises himself, right? You can always feel God's love. God is always there for you no matter what in terms of God's love if you want it. But everything else is temporary. Land ownership, life, you know, anything, right? Wealth, health, nothing's promised by God. There's no, you know, forever with God. And, uh, but anyways, the Zionist people and many of the Christians are Zionists, and Donald Trump seems to be a Zionist as well, believe that Israel was promised to the Jewish people. And this was Israel that was talked about in the Bible. So it means all this area, I show you this all the time, almost half of Iraq, a big chunk of Saudi Arabia, Egypt, Lebanon, and it's all... um, I think this is Jordan here. And it's all, um, you know, a lot of this land is either rich with oil or rich with resources. Gaza has all these rich natural resources and oil that they haven't tapped. And it's beautiful beachfront property. I mean, they have a little bit of the Persian Gulf here, Red Sea. So this would give them access to so much of this, these, these oceans and vacation spots. And I mean, it'd be a beautiful piece of land for them, right? This is the primary the primo land, the best land in in all of the Middle East. You know, and I said this before, and this Jared Kushner actually, this is uh, Donald Trump's nephew. In Gaza's waterfront property, it could be uh, very valuable. The thing that that I would try to do if I was Israel right now is I would just uh, bulldoze something in the Negev. I would try to move people in there. Are people in Israel seriously talking about that possibility, about hosting Gazan refugees in what is considered, quote unquote, Israel proper? I don't know. Yeah, I mean, but that would be something you would try to work on. I'm sitting in my yeah. beach right yeah. now. But... Yeah, you are. And so, um, you know, this is this would be the Trump legacy that they would greenlight Israel and maybe back them militarily to go in and take back the so-called promised land. I mean, as far as we know, this is Donald Trump's position. Uh, it, 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 gosh, speaking of being ashamed of themselves, my God. Here's a guy that runs around and trashes the United States of America every day because he's not president. He trashes the... This guy, Donald Trump, I mean, this guy's just... You don't really have to... You don't have to go through your, your rhetoric here. 
you know, like Donald Trump is shilling for Israel, and that's all you have to say. United States of America before he is president, despite the fact that before and after uh, the United States, as I say all the time, strongest economy in the world, easily strongest military. Yeah, we're not doing great, but it, bro, come on. Come on, Gumby Joe and your, and your dude. Terry in the world, easily uh, the most soft power in the world, easily the greatest uh, uh, institutions of higher learning, easily the greatest. Uh, uh, look at her smile. Look at look at <laughs> medical doctors and healthcare professionals in the world, easily. You can. It's not that. It's not even ranked that way. Like you're just out, absolutely lying here. America is slipping in pretty much every category, and. I mean, we're becoming a third world country. You go to some of these airports and you go to some of these cities and it's run down, right? Because infrastructure breaks down. And it's harder to repair infrastructure and maintain it than it is to build a brand new city, especially with all the technology and things. You know, when cities were built, they had different types of labor, different types of um, technology and, you know, machinery. And then after 100 years or so, when cities start to collapse... There's nobody who knows how to, you know, repair the things that, the way they were built before, right? Because they have a, everything is now modernized. And so, you know, th that's why empires collapse. It's easier to build an empire than maintain it. You can go down the list, and yet Gene Robinson, everything is personalized to Donald Trump. That's what happens yeah. in a cult. If, if A cult? If he's not president of the United States, and he says... America is horrible. America is awful. America is a joke. He says it. You didn't talk about the fact that, you know, this is about Israel. Uh, let me just um, stop here for a second. Okay, so I want to make a distinction here. Um, there's a significant difference between right-wing leaning truthers and just plain truthers. And it's not the same thing at all. Because what I would define as a truth or not, you know, I don't like the term or any of these terms, but there is an awakening that's going on in America. And there's the woke, the left wing leaning truthers, you could call them truthers, the right wing leaning truthers, in various categories of people who agree with the same problem. And that problem is we've been lied to excessively, that everything we've been taught in schools, indoctrinated and you know, media, everything that we've been told is a lie to one extent or another. Now, there'd be some disagreement about everything being a lie, because there's some, some of these groups believe that this part is still pure, that, you know, religion is still good, and or the Democratic Party is still good, or the liberal movement is still good, or Trump is still good, or the right wing, you know, all these things, right? But there is a shared belief that, at least in, in part, we've been lied to excessively, right? And that's something we all agree on. And there's lots of people. Maybe that's 70, 60, 70 percent of the population agrees with that. But then there are people who realize that we've been lied to about everything. You know, we have fundamental building blocks of our culture and our society and a worldview and all these things, right? And this includes religion, includes your education, includes how you feel about, you know, social types of things, includes the economy. It includes science. It includes all these things, these major building blocks. I mean, probably everything but math, and maybe even with math, I don't know. You know, it's hard to lie about math, but I'm sure they'll find a way. Or at least they misuse statistics and data. And so the math isn't, you know, the math is being, you know, um, misinterpreted, right? But it also is about the origin of our species, where we came from, and the nature of human beings. The idea that we have a soul, things like this, they, you know, reincarnation, all these types of things. They are lying to you about all these things, where we came from, and, you know, are there extraterrestrials, and have there been extraterrestrials that have been involved in, you know, human creation? Are there extraterrestrials that have been involved with planet Earth? You know, what else is there out there, right? You know, there will be people on the left who'll say, well, science, you can trust science, but of course that's bogus, because scientists... Let's say science was pure, scientists are not. And so science will, scientists will lie. And there'll people say, well, we trust our religion, and that's bogus because your religion has been gamed, has been rewritten, and you've been lied to, and you've been manipulated, and now the religion acts as a middleman between you and God.
So there's virtually nothing that you have heard that hasn't been contaminated partially or completely by the deceptive system, right? The whole nature of our system is demonic. And what I mean by demonic, I mean that it is something that goes against the will of God. You know, when people say demonic, they, you know, there's this horror movie version of it, some, you know, demon or something. And I have a much more um, you know, liberal view about it of how much, how many things are demonic because God has given us all freedom of choice. But there is a soul, we have a soul, and we have divinity within us, and there is the right choice in every circumstance. We have the ability to find the right choice and do what God wants us to do. And oftentimes we find that right choice, we at least contemplate that right choice, and we choose not to do that right choice. We would prefer to do something differently. And every time we do that, we're doing something demonic. Every time we back something that our ego wants to do, but our soul doesn't, or our soul doesn't, you know, our soul is very clear about we shouldn't do that thing, but we do it anyway, we are doing something demonic. Every lie is usually backed by some sort of demonic, I mean, unless you were instructed to lie for God in some way, I mean, not in some bogus way that you make up, but, I, you know, I, I don't even know the, how that would, how you would give an, I, I can't give an example of that, but pretty much every lie, every deception is a demonic act, and so... We all engage in that, but our overall system is di demonic. It goes against the will of God. It's deceptive, and it doesn't align with the divine principles and laws across the board. So we all participate in that, right? In many ways, we have very little choice. And so when you're involved in a system that is demonic and goes against the will of God, then just like anything else, when there's a mistake, God creates, the divine system creates, automatically creates a resistance, a force, you know, a counter force to your wrong action. We've all experienced this in our lives. So immediately there are warnings, there are, you know, there's issues and obstacles that appear that encourage you to correct your wrong decision. But we don't do that collectively as a system and then individually. So that's where we are as a species right now, where we are willfully going in the wrong direction, heading over the cliff, ignoring all the warnings and suffering all the, or postponing all the consequences for our wrongful activity. And the system, in order to move forward, has to become more and more demonic and more and more depraved in order to keep on going, more and more deceptive. And so that's where we are as a system. And the only thing that we can do is let it collapse and then build something new, right? Acknowledge that it is, it's a failed system, that is a system that you know was a mistake, an abomination, and it is demonic, and we have to let it go, even though we're 100% dependent on it. But of course, now it's the idea of it's too big to fail. So that's where we are. That's where everybody is in it, right? And the people running the system are having to engage in negative behaviors to keep it going. But getting back to my major point here. So people who are seeking the truth, they realize, we realize we're being lied to, and we want to know the truth. We want to know all of it, like, you know, down to the origin of our species, asking the questions, why am I here? What's my purpose? Because it certainly isn't what the the, uh, the overall system says to be rich and famous and powerful. Materialism, right? Getting material goods and services that somehow are going to make our lives better. None of those things, right? None of those things are part of, uh, you know, the true nature of our species and why we're here on a soul level. So a real truth seeker, this person seeking the truth, realizes they're being lied to and then seeks the truth no matter how painful it is and what they find, right? And they're, you know, willing to accept the truth even if, if it's going to uh, be uncomfortable and scary and, you know, the implications of the truth means widespread changes that you're not ready to accommodate and, you know, all these things. You're going to get overwhelmed and, I mean, even understanding the nature of divinity in these things, like you're going to have to expand your consciousness and horizons to really find out the truth. And so those are, those are all the people that are true truth seekers. And it makes up a very small portion of the overall truth movement. Maybe 5%, I don't even know, right? Who are willing to accept the truth or look for the truth no matter what it is and how painful it is to experience. The majority of truthers, the so-called truthers, are people who believe that maybe the whole system's bad, but 
their side, their point of view, is still better. And so that isn't a truther. That isn't somebody who's seeking the truth. What they're seeking is they're looking for information that says that they've been right all along, that their side and their people and their group, whether it be the Republicans or the Democrats, whether it be the QBs or the woke people, they're all looking for people to validate their point of view. And you can tell that they're insincere about truthers because they hear something that challenges their point of view and they immediately attack you and call you a shill and they have all these defense mechanisms, which makes them a sheeple. It makes them a worse than a sheeple because sheeple are just sitting there passively. But these people are activated, they're angry, they're radicalized, and they're pushing for change in an agenda, and they are easily manipulated as long as you agree with their point of view. And that's Trumpers and people on the right wing, certainly people on the left wing and the, you know, the, the, uh, you know, the, the extreme end of the left wing. We see that all the time. But the extreme end of the right wing aren't willing to face up to the lies that they've been told from their own people, from the people in their demographics, and lies about their demographics and their belief system. So they're not really truthers. And those people are the people who still are backing Trump. Because you see that all of these people are a part of the problem. Everybody with a, you know, who's standing in front of a microphone is a part of the problem. They're being used or they're voluntarily um, lying to you or whatever it is that they're doing. It's playing a part, a role in this, you know, this drama. And there's lots of reasons to say that Joe Biden is a nightmare being senile and all and then all the liberal agenda he's pushing and things that are ultimately destructive to us. But Trump has done his fair share with Operation Warp Speed and some of these other things. But now he's pushing for green lighting Israel to do what Israel wants to do, which would ultimately lead to World War Three, and, you know, which I think is inevitable anyway. So I'm like, whatever. I mean, if Trump gets elected and that's what happens, that's what happens. But recognize that's what you're voting for. You're not voting for a guy who is on your side. You know, Trump is so selfish that there are places where a Republican candidate is hurt by being a Trumper, many places across the country. And Trump expects them to be a Trumper anyway and lose rather than, you know, not be, uh, you know, be a rhino Republican, Republican in name only, as he would call him, because he's that selfish, he's that immature, and he can't even see what's better for himself. And, you know, any real politician, and politicians suck, but Trump sucks as well, even worse, in this instance, because of his selfishness, realizes that, like Joe Biden showing up to an area where it's going to hurt that politician, hurt that, you know, Senate candidate or House of Representative candidate or one of these, you know, whatever it is, it's, you know, in his best interest not to show up there and not to seek that person's endorsement because it's better for the Democrats to get as many seats as possible. But Donald Trump won't do that because he's so narcissistic and he's got such th thin skin. I mean, is uh, just in terms of his persona. I received a tweet and I thought it came from Trump and I'd received it. Twitter recommended this tweet and it must have been a, somebody tweeting something he posted on True Social. And he was posting reposting something from Mel Gibson that was supposedly having images and pictures from Ellen DeGeneres and the Clintons and maybe some other people uh, performing abusive acts or whatever in Haiti. And, you know, I didn't follow along the thing because, you know, I didn't, I mean, I didn't go to Mel Gibson's website or whatever he has. You know, Mel Gibson is not somebody to be trusted either. And it's just something, you know, it's these storylines that Republicans want to hear. They might be true, they might be, you know, somewhat embellished, or they might be out and out false. But it's just a way to, to keep you divided, thinking that one side is some, so much more evil than the other side that you have to be engaged in the system, and you don't. You just have to figure out what you're going to do next once the system collapses. You know, surviving whatever is going to happen in the next, you know, whatever, 10, 15 years or so, and then figuring out a way to rebuild something, not making the same mistakes as the past. And that would be what I consider true truth seekers. Anyways, let's get back to Trump here. Uh, if mm -hmm. if you are yep. a Jew and you don't support him, 
then you hate your religion and you're a bad Jew. Uh, again, this is something that yeah. loses. Yeah, I remember when Joe Biden said, um, if you're if you're black and you don't vote for him, you're not black. <laughs> you got more questions, but I tell you, if you have a problem figuring out whether you're for me or Trump, and you ain't black. I mean, remember when Joe Biden said that? How do you guys cover that, right? Because that seems like almost kind of worse. Because this is something else, right? In the one instance, he's talking about American citizens who have the right to vote for anybody they want. And Joe Biden is defining who's black and who's not. Like he has some ability to do that. Where Trump's thing, a war that's going on, you know, and all the implications with Israel. I mean, they're both bad. They're both arrogant and just old guy stuff and just their stupid comments. But I think Biden might be, Biden's might be a little bit worse in terms of how offensive, how offensive it is to the group of people. But Trump's has implications about green lighting, green lighting Israel to do whatever they want in the Middle East, and that's probably the scarier of the two things. So they're both pretty bad, right? I was talking about it yesterday uh, when we were talking about his column. This is something that if any other politician had said before, or if they say after, yeah. uh, they'd be drummed out of politics. But not Donald Trump, mm -hmm. his people. No. His no, we just saw Joe Biden. Joe Biden said that thing about blacks, remember? Anyways, these, these sad sack m and here. So then there are some follow-ups to this. That was from two days ago. ...of themselves. Pretty notable rhetoric there. So let's take a listen to how he responded to a question about those comments yesterday. Okay, Trump, what do you got? I think that the Democrats have been very, very opposed to Jewish people. That's true. And to Israel. We're doing very well with the Jewish voter, it looks like. And we should do very well. If you look at all of our... Pre okay, so that's... ...presidents, they're saying Trump was the best for Israel. So Trump's saying that Trump is the best president for Israel. You know, Israel's interests and America's interests are not always aligned. And oftentimes they're not aligned at all. And that's the situation now. What Israel's doing to Gaza is not in the best interest of America. And yet Trump is greenlighting them because, you know, he's more for Israel than he is for America, right? I mean, that's, you know, that's been played out. One of his power groups, he, Trump has powerful groups behind him as well, and one of them is Israel. And they said, you know, that they think he's the greatest president in terms of giving Israel everything that Israel wants. And think about that, right? If you know any of the narratives about Israel and the truth community and what it represents and what you're seeing playing out now in the genocide that's happening in Gaza Strip and all these other things. Um, so then Morning Joe, the next day they got into it here. I mean, I mean Chuck Schumer has spent Donnie Deutsch is an Look, she's so sad. Entire life, the victim of <clears throat> anti-Semitic tropes because he has been such a fierce defender of, of Israel. Now suddenly Donald Trump decides that he again will determine, Donald Trump will determine who is a bad Jew and who is an enemy of Israel. Your thoughts? I think out of all the things that Donald Trump has ever said that have offended my core, this is it. This is how, the number one. How dare you, Donald Trump, tell me. How dare you? How dare you? Freaking out. How You're dare you? Out. It's how right. dare Settle you? Down. Anything how you dare want, you? Out, but the bottom line how is very dare clear. dare you? When you cross how absolutely the border dare you, illegally, sir? you how have dare given you? up the right. How dare you be so flippant, man? Well, we say, how dare they? Uh, what it takes to be a good Jew and not be a good Jew, what it takes to love Israel and not love Israel. First of all, you stand for nothing what Judaism is all about, about being a decent human being, about being kind to others. You are the farthest thing from what anybody should say what a good Jew is or isn't. And make no mistake about it, for anybody who says, I'm voting for Donald Trump because he's automatically good for Israel, he would turn on Jews in a second. This is a guy... You know who else would turn on somebody in a second? Okay, um... I couldn't find videos of this because they scrubbed it because, you know, MSNBC, where Donnie Deutsch is a regular and he had his own show on CNBC, was not his first show in terms of his interaction with NBC, working for NBC. He worked for here. He was a regular here on The Apprentice, right? He was, um, here it is. Donald Trump, 
This is the cast of The Apprentice, Donald Trump, self, Karen Kepscher, self and boardroom advisor, and Donnie Douche, Donnie Douche, and he's um, top of the list here, right? He was a regular on the show and good friend to Donald Trump. <laughs> Used to lend money for the Donald Trump. Donald Trump was involved with his you know, banking empire. And so NBC has tried to scrub this. They don't have any clips available. But if you watch The Apprentice, you'll see Donnie Deutsch, who is now, you know, really anti-Trump. He's very angry about it, right? Um, so that's that guy. Okay, so let's move on to this. Ketanja Brown Jackson concerned First Amendment is hamstringing government from censorship. Supreme Court Justice Ketanja Brown Jackson raised concerns that the First Amendment may stand in the way of government censorship in unique times. In Monday's oral argument for Murthy versus Missouri, Jackson appeared to be skeptical that the government could not censor social media point, uh, posts in the most important time periods. My biggest concern is that your view has a First Amendment hamstringing the government in significant ways in the most important time periods. You seem to be suggesting that the duty cannot manifest itself in the government encouraging or pressuring platforms to take down harmful information. So can you help me? Because I'm really worried about that because you've got the First Amendment operating in an environment of threatening circumstances from the government's perspective, and you're saying the government can't interact with the source of those problems. And so what they're doing here and saying here, or she is, is that the First Amendment is nil and void because of the Internet and because we're in more threatening circumstances than ever before, and that's not true, right? And so that's why the First Amendment exists, so the government doesn't interfere with your ability to express your opinion. Okay, so I'm not sure I covered this before I have it up. I might have talked about this on uh, one of my past videos, but National Guard to be deployed for solar eclipse 2024. It seems to be mostly in Oklahoma, but the National Guard has been at least in one state alerted because of concerns about something that's going to happen during the eclipse. So this is what um, the Supreme Court leans against limiting Biden administration contacts with social media platforms. So that's concerning, right? A majority of the Supreme Court justices appeared highly skeptical Monday about claims the Biden administration crossed the line from persuasion to coercion when it told social media platforms to remove problematic content. Um, so this is how much they're owned. A lot of this had to do with Pfizer and, you know, all these things. But the Supreme Court is basically saying it's okay for Biden to threaten these uh, big tech companies and, you know, um, make them take down these posts. And he, what he used was, you know, that they are, um, there's some title, whatever it is, that prevents them from being sued for things that people post on their sites. And if they would, could be sued for things that there was posted on their sites, then they couldn't operate and they'd have to close down. And so basically what Biden did, his administration, not Biden, was threaten them to, you know, take down whatever they disagreed with. And that's just not cool. Like that's totally a First Amendment violation. Biden wanders off stage after spotting baby in crowded Arizona campaign event. He couldn't resist wandering off to see a baby because he's a creepy m and Folks, we have accomplished so much. We have made so much progress together, but we know that there is still work to be done, which is why we are going to organize like never before and ensure we are turning out the vote. Because of your vote, <laughs> folks, we have accomplished so much. So he just wanders off stage, which is rude and kind of disturbing because, you know, nobody wants to creep around their baby, right? No sane person. Schumer rejects Netanyahu's request to talk to Democrats as Israel's leader addresses the GOP. Um, so Chuck Schumer is standing up a little bit to Israel. You know, I just wanted to say one more thing about religion. Um, you know, watching this firsthand, some of you guys are aware of this, most of you are probably a little bit aware of it. But the Saj Marg meditation that I've done for years transformed my life and, you know, helped me connect to God in deeper levels and just a, a wonderful thing. 
has now been corrupted and like this past um by this clown dodgy who has <laughs> franchised a scam in which um they claim to be able to teach kids to be able to smell colors and solve rubik's cubes by touch and smell instead of using your eyes and you know st stupid stuff like that right it's a like a, a known scam and he's done a lot of stupid things but he's corrupted something that was you know once great and the stunning thing for me has been that all these people who claim to love the system and love the former master have allowed dodgy to throw uh the former president master of the system under the bra under the bus and disparage him and destroy his life's work and all these things and then corrupt this system and they have gone along with it and some of them because of bribes some of them because of cultural issues you know the guru culture in india or whatever it might be but the bottom line is he's taken something that was once uh you know a pristine spiritual system that helped people connect to god and turned it into a religious cult and then last week he had this sort of a a mega gathering where he brought in all these other um, spiritual organizations they call it a mahastav i called it a cultistav where he's trying to poach people from other people's systems and there was um the president of india who's a lesser position than the prime minister the vice president of india and the woman who's in charge of the the british commonwealth that once you know the britain did laid a hurting on india like just really exploit the indian people and uh you know it was I mean, basically slave labor and colonization all these things and yet he's you know uh, bringing these politicians in and all these other pseudo spiritual people you know he got an award from the <laughs> he got some like some trophy or award from the british commonwealth or all these things right a british commonwealth award for peace i believe peace and um a global ambassador for peace and building faith you know and i made a video disparaging him and his system and some guy showed up and uh, commented about the award and things said it was you know it was a joke but Dodgy himself created a heartfulness award and you know watching this fall apart the way it has and seeing that this has happened in spiritual organization after spiritual organization where they take something real you know this happened with um you see pretty much every mom and pop organic health food company that ends up doing well gets absorbed by Nestle or by you know I mean craft or you know all these big food companies right that then um you know take the the quality ingredients and the wholesome nature of the food and they you know mass produce it after it's it's uh got an audience of people it's got a customer base and maybe people notice the difference maybe they don't but they cut cost and put inferior ingredients and take the life and the the prana out of the food and you know turned it into something more corporate and all these things right it becomes poison for the the dumbed down masses and the people who you know have bought into a product and then they don't realize that it's no longer the you know the, the quality food that it once was i think somebody sent me something or maybe i saw it today that mcdonald's has some new food you know i don't know what it is something that people are are um really into and i'm like you know at what point do you realize mcdonald's food is poison you know it's not food it's poison right but going back to religion you know they they take something that was great and there was a spiritual master or someone of a high caliber that came down to do some spiritual work and then that person um you know dies and they slowly corrupt the system and it's the most powerful of scams because it represents your connection to god and people will do pretty much anything for god and so this is the problem we've had with all these you know various i mean you can call science uh, like all science uh, you know the religion of science and it's the most powerful religion now for liberal people and people of the mind who want to deny the reality of the soul and the reality of divinity and it's the same kind of a scam it's based in you know some sort of clergy and they're the only ones who get to 
the scientists will get to interpret the data. I've talked about this with Fucci and these other people. And, you know, you see this with Trump, and Trump has sort of a cult of personality and, you know, all these things. And, you know, the way that people feel about the anti-Trump people and all the way people buy into the whole, you know, rigmarole and all the stuff that's going on. But the issue has always been people, right? Because if people were better, they wouldn't fall for this kind of stuff. They wouldn't buy into it, right? They just wouldn't go along with it. Some people buy into it and believe in it. Some people are smart enough to see through it, but they get their little piece of the pie and they're able to, you know, cut themselves off a chunk for being complicit or going along with it or whatever it is, right? Being a part of it. And so as long as everybody sucks, this is the system you're going to get. And, you know, with the way that people view this, there's always this sense of false hope because people are don't deserve better they don't deserve we don't deserve a leader that would not just a leader we don't deserve a utopian society you remember the the conversation from the smith character and the morpheus character in the movie the matrix where he's saying that you know they built the matrix in the beginning as this blissful place where there was no crime and everyone was happy and people rejected it right they couldn't stand it and so they had to make the matrix into a you know a a, like an apocalyptic hell or whatever it was, right? Just a corrupt and, you know, uh, you know what we have now in the world today, right? Because that's what people want. That's what people feel comfortable with. That's what people, uh, you know, they just, they don't want bliss. People don't want, you know, want drama. People want conflict. They want failure or whatever it is, right? They want nightmares. They want horror movies. And they very seldom pick somebody who's, you know, people in their life to partner with, to marry, to to go into business with, or to, you know, any number of things. They don't pick people that are of a high quality or, a, you know, who are going to be uh, people with good character qualities that are going to treat them right. More often than not, people choose somebody who's going to abuse them or someone's going to, you know, whatever it is. And that's just the nature of human, human, you know, human beings now. And everyone in the truth community is waiting for some kind of outcome of a positive nature is like deluding themselves because why would we deserve that right i mean it could happen but why would it happen like you know you, you have to create something and manifest it and who's manifesting something where i mean it's you know complete ignorance of where you get your food and where you get your products and the kind of slave labor and the kind of hellish environments that most of our resources come from these exploited colonized places where people are you know living in abject poverty making our stuff for us you know working 30 you know 16 hour days and for for you know under a dollar or something like that or whatever it is right and so um you know it's the world isn't like that right the world you know not everybody in the world can live in a cul-de-sac right <laughs> not everyone in the world can have that kind of lifestyle based in the system it's a have and have not system. As long as there's opulence, as long as there's people with extraordinary wealth, there has to be poverty. Wealth is defined by poverty. And the people who want more and the people who accept less, and that's, you know, that's, uh, it's a, you know, it's a, it's a joint project, right, where people all go along with this the way it is. And so I was thinking about this in terms of people's belief in, you know, just accepting Jesus as your Lord and Savior, and he's going to somehow you know, getting you into heaven. I've talked about past lives and future lives and the idea if you have a soul, you really, really believe in future and past lives because your soul is eternal. Your soul was somewhere before. Your soul wasn't created by your body, right? How many people believe their soul was created by their body? How many people believe that your soul created your body, right? And so if your soul created your body, if your soul used is using your body to you know manifest itself in physical form, then, which of course is the way it would have to be. That anybody who believes in a soul, that's what you know is supposed to have happened, right? If that has happened, then your soul came from somewhere else and it's going somewhere else afterwards. And all this talk about heaven and hell and all these things that you know, whatever it is, your soul is eternal and you have a you know 70, 80 year life. And we're talking about a universe that's around for millions upon millions of years, billions of years. But, you know, believing in the second coming of Jesus, and I'm not, you know, doubting that Jesus will come again, you know, because people, you know, souls reincarnate. 
especially at a time like this where there are a lot of higher developed souls coming in to you know to change the the trajectory of the world and from a you know materialistic uh, hellhole to something better that's more spiritual right but this idea that you can somehow get to heaven for doing next to nothing but just accepting a religion that's exploiting you right like why would you deserve that like there has to be you know something you have to do everything has to be earned like there's no free you know, there's no free meals in in terms of uh, accomplishments in your life on physical plane of existence and even more so in a spiritual field spiritual field it's a lot harder to uh, work your way up the spiritual ladder than it is to be a successful person in, in the material life. But if you look at what you do every day, like, you know, how you behave, what you're doing with your life, what you're doing for other people, what you're doing for God, what you're not doing for God, what you're not doing for your soul or whatever it is, right? And just your your output of thoughts that you have, you know, you negative thoughts you have towards people, hateful thoughts, right, judgmental thoughts, and you know, things that you say about other people, hurting people's feelings, and, you know, whatever we all do, right? And you look at what you do, like how what your product is as a person. You know, just objectively, you can always look at somebody worse and say, you know, look, I'm better than Joe Biden or, who, you know, anybody, you know, Marjorie Taylor Greene or something. It's easy to, you know, the low lowlifes that live, you know, down the street or whatever it is. I mean, you can always find people that you, you, you know, that you're, 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 you feel like you're a much better person than they are, right? But in terms of just like your self-evaluation of the kind of person you are and what you're doing every day with your life and how that's affecting the collective and affecting your soul and some future version of yourself, like, what do you think you deserve? Like, just be honest about it. Like, what do you think you deserve? I mean, when you die, what do you think you deserve? Like, if you're, you know, uh, uh, I mean, a, a, a you know, fairly negative person with bad attitude and pretty much hateful towards everyone else and whatever it is that you are as a person like just be honest about it right I mean, if everyone was honest about it and thought about the, what they actually deserved not just in terms of some afterlife but what do you deserve tomorrow like what have you earned for tomorrow like what do you you know in terms of your I mean people look at the mirror and they're going well I'm fat and they're like well because you've been stuffing Twinkies down your ghoul hole right <laughs> like that's the outcome you know the whatever is happening right now is as a result of your past and what's going to happen in the future is a result of your present right you're creating your future now and everything that's going on in your life is you can find some cause and effect to it for the most part i mean we start off as a baby sure you grow up in a abusive household and you're like what did i do to deserve that i was just a baby but what do you, what were you before right like if they, you, you came from somewhere what did you create in your past existence to be born into a low-life hellhole with a couple of deranged, you know, pedo parents or alcoholic parents or something like that, right? I mean, there's, you know, it's a continuation of something else. And so if you think about that that way, you know, you can evaluate what you deserve out of life, like what you deserve out of life, what you deserve after life, because you're, you know, you're evaluating the, you know, the product of you as a person, you know, what you're, the energy and the everything that you're exuding out to the world. And most people are just, you know, are so wrapped up in the matrix and the distraction and, you know, some outcome of something that's going to affect them almost, you know, not at all, whether it be sports or, you know, politics or, or whatever it is, some reality TV show or whatever. But in reality, you know, in the real reality, you are creating something. And, you know, tomorrow is going to, is what you're doing now is going to affect what is going to happen to you tomorrow and the next day and you know, all the way up to you die, and very few people think about it that way. And backing somebody like Trump, I mean, you know, what are you getting out of that, right? I mean, how do you not see it? And it's just because you feel like there's some miracle waiting for you, and there's no miracles. I mean, there's no no real miracles because everything that's happening is, you know, part of the divine process. People make mistakes, they have freedom of choice, and they engage in behaviors, and then you know, there's also the divine reaction, the consequences of the punishment for going against the will of God. You know, it's a self-punishment that your soul's administering to you and drawing to you because it wants you to get back on the right track, but then you deny it, your ego just, you know, it stinks its heels in and goes even farther down the wrong path and refuses to admit its, you know, its depravity. 
And that's why Planet Earth sucks right now, and probably the end result is going to be wiped pretty clean, and they'll have to start over with something else, right? In a post-apocalyptic type of situation. I mean, that's, you know, isn't that what we, you know, if you look at everything that's happening, if you're being honest with yourself, the way people treat each other, the way people behave, the selfish nature of human beings, and, you know, the, I don't care what happens to the environment, I don't care what happens to the poor people that are making my clothes and my food, and all these things, you know, just as long as I get mines, right, all this stuff. Everybody thinking they deserve more than they, you know, complain about behaviors and then doing the same exact behavior to somebody else and thinking they're justified. And so that's, you know, human nature right now. That's what people are about. And, you know, people like that deserve not good things, you know, deserve the consequences of their actions, just like every everything and everybody else, right? Anyways, just some cheery thoughts for you. <laughs> Only spirituality will save this world. It's Paramato, definitely warning from the apocalypse. And the ascension, everyone have a blessed day and be grateful.